Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we are going to be using trig ratios to find missing sides and angles in right triangles. So let's get started here. Now, before we can do it, if you are having to be using a graphing calculator, which is a fantastic resource, I want to make sure that your calculator is in the right mode. Now, our calculators have a couple of different modes when it comes to dealing with trig functions. We have something called radians, which is a way that we measure angles, and something called degrees, which is another way that we measure angles. Now, for the sake of this video, everything will be measured in degrees. So we want to make sure that our calculators are in the right mode. So what I want you to do is find the sign button on your calculator. It's spelled S-I-N. And then put in sign of 30 and hit equals and see what it says. You should get 1 half or 0 0.5. If for some reason you do not get one half or 0 0.5 and you end up getting negative 9.88032 or something else, what I want you to do is if you were using a TI-83 or TI-84, you're going to go on your calculator to the button that is called mode. Now this button is right at the top next to our second button beside the delete one. So we're going to go up to the mode button and what you're going to do is it should be approximately the fourth one down. You should see a line and it should have two things written. It should have the word radian and it should have the word degree. Now what we want is all of our math today is going to be done in terms of degree. So what you wanna do is make sure that that is highlighted in dark. So it should be dark, should have like a dark highlight over it. If for some reason your calculator does not, then what you're gonna do is go over that line and bring your cursor right on top of where it says degree and then hit the word hit enter or that equals button and it should change it so that that's the one that's darkened once that's happened you can just hit second and then that mode button again and it'll take you back to your home screen but we want to make sure that we're in this case so after you've changed it to degree make sure you go back and do that sign of 30 on your calculator to make sure that we get that 0.5 now that you've had your calculator in the right form what we are going to do is we are going to use trig ratios to find sides of a triangle based on the proportion that we've set up. So the sine of 30 degrees equals 0.5. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that if I look at the, at the relationship between the sides or the ratio between the sides that are opposite divided by the hypotenuse of that angle that's 30 degrees, it should have a ratio of one half. That's what that means. So what can we do with that? Well, if I don't know what one of those sides are, so if I know what the opposite is, but not the hypotenuse, or if I know what the hypotenuse is, but not the opposite, I can use the fact that I know that they'll be similar and they'll have that same proportion to then determine what it is. So let's take a look at this example here. So in this case, we know that sine of 30 is 0.5 or 1 half. So that means the relationship between 10 over x also needs to be 1 half. Now, how can we solve for x? Well, we kind of have two options here. We can cross multiply, which is some people's preferred option. And if we do that, we end up getting 1x equals 20 which means that x equals 20. We also can use our like inferring skills and say what number, 10 is half of what number? And we can say that 10 is half of 20, so we know that that's gonna be the case. We also cannot cross multiply, but multiply it out individually by multiplying by 10, on, multiplying by x on both sides and getting a 1 half x equals 10, and then multiplying by two or dividing by one half to get that x equals 20. There are lots of different ways we can do it, but what we wanna do is figure out what is that number. Now that we have it, we can use that ratio to determine what that side is. Now that we know that side, we can actually use those angles to find the other missing angles, and we can use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the third side. So really, these trig ratios are so helpful in knowing how to determine the proportions between the sides so that we can then solve it. So let's take a look at this next example here. So we want to use trig ratios, which gave us a pair of sides, and we want to know what that missing side is. So in this case, what we want to do is we're going to do we're going to deal with the sine of 37. Now, why are we dealing with the sine? Well, remember that sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now, we want to use the sine because the two sides that we're given are the side that is opposite and the side that's the hypotenuse. If we were given a side over here, then we would want to use cosine and the hypotenuse would use cosine. If we we're giving this side over here and this side, we would use tangent. So it really depends on what sides we're given, which trig ratio we want to use. So in this case, we're given an opposite and a hypotenuse, so we want to use sine. So the sine of 37 is equal to 10 over x. Now there's two ways we can do this. We can either cross multiply, and we can get that 10 equals the sine of 37 times x, and then divide both sides by the sine of 37, which of course works. 
and we can figure out what x equals. Now that is a great option. So then what we have to do in our calculator is just type in 10 divided by sine of 37. And that should give us what we've got there. So 10 divided by the sine of 37 equals 16.62. Now notice how I rounded this to two decimal places. If you decide to change this out of sine into a decimal, what I want you to do is use four decimal places for your work and two decimal places for your answer so that we can have the most accurate answer that we need. So that means that this hypotenuse here is 16.62 units long. Now that is one option. The other way that we can solve this that some people like to do is we can actually just multiply both sides by x. So I've got the sine of 37. This is kind of how you'll see it on my paper. The sine of 37 equals 10 over x. So we multiply both sides by x and we get that the sine of 37x equals 10. And then we can divide both sides by 10 by sine of 37, which is just like what we were doing in this previous problem. And we end up getting that x also equals 16.62. So again, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. If you multiply by x or if you cross multiply and then divide, the only difference is if you decide to cross multiply, make sure that you are putting that sine or cosine or tangent of our function of our angle that we know divided by one so that when we are cross multiplying we know that it's one times ten not sine of thirty times ten. So let's take a look at another couple of examples here where we're dealing with these trig ratios and how we can use them to find the sides. So in this case it doesn't tell us which trig ratio we want to use but we can look at the relationship between the sides that were given to us and the angle to determine which one. So we've got 37 here 37 degrees and the two ang the two sides we were given are the sides that are adjacent and the hypotenuse. Now let's talk about the sine, the different trig ratios that we know. We know sine, cosine, and tangent. Now sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So knowing these three different things, which one would be the best option? Well, it would be the cosine. So we're going to do the cosine of 37 degrees. And we know that should be equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse or 10 over x. Now, because of that, we can then solve for that x there. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x. And I get the cosine of 37 degrees is times x is equal to 10. And then we can divide both sides by that cosine of 37 degrees to finish solving this. And again, that cosine of 37 degrees is just a ratio, meaning that we can type that right into our calculator and figure out what that is. And so as we do that, we've got 10 divided by the cosine of 37, which ends up giving us 12.52. Again, we want to round to our, we want to round to the hundredth place or two decimals. So we are going to look at that 12.52 there. Fantastic. Okay, let's take a look at one last problem here. In this one, we're going to do the same thing that we've done before. So we want to figure out which trig ratio should I use? Well, what sides do we have related to this? I still have my adjacent and I have my hypotenuse. So with that adjacent and the hypotenuse, I know that I wanna use the cosine of 37 because that is related to our adjacent side and our hypotenuse side. Now, what we're gonna do is remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of 37 degrees is going to be equal to our adjacent side, which is X over 10. Now this one's a lot easier to solve because I can actually just multiply both sides oh, by 10 and we can get rid of that. So x is going to be equal to 10 times the cosine of 37 degrees. And what is 10 times the cosine of 37 degrees? Well the cosine of 37 degrees is 0.7986 and we multiply that by 10 and so x is going to be 7.9 nine nine because remember we want to round it to the nearest round it to the nearest hundreds place and so that's going to be 7.99 for that x value not quite eight but it's pretty close and that is how we can use those trig ratios to find sides that are missing now what if we had to solve for a missing angle so instead of giving us a trig ratio and using that the sine of a certain angle to find the sides what we're going to do is we're going to be given the side lengths and we want to find what that angle is. So we need to figure out what the opposite of these things are. Well, what is the opposite of sine? Well, the opposite of add is to subtract. The opposite of divide is to multiply. 
the opposite of a square root is to square something. So what is the opposite of sine? Well, the opposite of sine is to do what we call the inverse sine. So again, the inverse is going to be used to find angles. And the regular trig function oh, is going to be used to find the sides. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking at here with these problems today. So let's use these inverse functions to figure out what this is. So very first, we want to figure out what, how we can use these inverse functions. So if you're using a TI-84 graphing calculator, what you're going to do is you're going to see right above the sine, cosine, and tangent, you're going to end up seeing these buttons that say sine negative 1, cosine negative 1, and tangent negative 1. These are referred to as inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent, which means it does the opposite of what sine, cosine, and tangent do. So what happens if I find the inverse sine of 0 0.5? Well, I'm going to do second sine to get that inverse sine and then put in 0 0.5. And notice how I get, that's right, we end up with 30 degrees. OK, now what happens when we do that inverse cosine? So the inverse cosine of 0 0.5446 well, that's going to end up giving us 57.00 degrees. Notice how we rounded that one out. And then we can also do the inverse tangent of 3.0777, which ends up getting us about 72 degrees. So notice how we can use those inverse sine, cosine, and tangent to take those proportions or those ratios and turn them into degrees. So let's take a moment to practice this. So we want to solve for these missing angles here. Now, just like before, when we're trying to decide which angles to solve for, we want to make sure that we're using the correct trig ratios. So to determine, that, to determine the trig ratio we want to use, we want to look at the sides that we're given. So in this case, we were given an opposite and an adjacent. So how do opposite and adjacent relate? Well, opposite and adjacent are related to the tangent of a function. And because they're related to the tangent, but I'm trying to solve for theta, I want to do the so what this is really saying is they're related to that tangent. So that means that the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Or the tangent of theta is equal to 1. That was a little sloppy. OK, that's going to be equal to 1. So how does that help us? Well, whatever the inverse tangent of 1 is should be equal to theta. Because what we can do is we can do that inverse tangent on both sides. And what that inverse tangent does is it actually cancels out with the tangent. So we end up getting that theta is equal to whatever the inverse tangent of 1 is. And if we do that inverse tangent of 1, we end up getting that it equals 45 degrees. Now, we also know about special right triangles. And so we could have used that method to determine this as well. But using these trig functions, we can definitely solve for what we need. So let's take a look at this next example here. So we want to solve for theta. Now, what are the sides that they gave us? related to theta? Well, they gave us two sides. They gave us the side that is adjacent, and they gave us the hypotenuse. So what do we want to use? Well, we want to use the cosine. So we know that the cosine of theta is going to be 2.6 over 8. But what is theta going to be? Well, the way we can decide theta is we can actually do the inverse cosine of that ratio of 26 or 2.6 divided by 8, and that will give us theta. And just like how you can see over here that if we do the inverse of something, it cancels out the other side. That's exactly what we've done here. So what is theta going to be? Well, let's look at the inverse cosine of 2.6 divided by 8. Well, that's going to end up giving us that theta is equal to approximately 71 degrees. Awesome. OK, let's take a look at one more example here where we're going to do that same thing. So in this case, again, we want to look at those, that relationship between those sides and angles. And we want to look here at this first triangle. Well, in this case, we've got an opposite and an adjacent. So what happens when I have an opposite and an adjacent? That's right. We want to use the tangent function. So again, if the tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, then that means the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent should be equal to theta. So what does that mean that our theta equals? Well, let's do that inverse tangent of 11 divided by 11.5. And that ends up getting us 43.73 degrees.
Awesome. Okay, let's take a look at one more example here. We're going to do this one on this next page. Um, and in this case, we're going to look at this second triangle here. So let's look at that relationship. So what is our relationship? Well, we are given an opposite and an adjacent. So just like before, we want to use that tangent. So the tangent of theta is equal to 10.8 over 6. So that means the inverse tangent of 10.8 over 6 is going to be equal to theta. So what does that mean that theta is? Well, the inverse tangent of 10.8 divided by 6 ends up giving us 60.95 degrees. Beautiful. OK, so that is how we can solve those. So again, a quick recap here. We know that sine of theta is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. We know that the cosine of theta is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And we know that the tangent of theta is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. Now, if I want to find a missing side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the trig ratio of whatever it is and then solve for the side. And remember, we can cross multiply, anything like that. So that's going to be trig ratios refer to the sine, cosine, and tangent option. Now, if we have a missing angle, that is when we are going to use the inverse trig ratios because we're trying to find the angle. And remember, a um, the trig ratios are related to those angles. So missing angles means those inverse trig ratios. And so to find that inverse trig ratios, remember, that is when we do that sine of negative 1. And then this is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. We're going to do the cosine of a negative 1 times the adjacent over the hypotenuse to equal theta, or the tangent of negative one, the inverse tangent is going to be the opposite over the adjacent to equal theta. So again, if we are missing a side, we use the trig ratio. If we are missing an angle, and when I say trig ratios, I'm referring to these ones. If we're missing an angle, then what we're going to do is we're going to want to use the inverse trig ratios to determine what that missing angle is. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But that is how we can solve the sides and angles of triangles.